Having departed Hitokapu Bay, Atoro Futoto, on November 26, 1941, Imperial Japan's Combined Carrier Battle Group, the Mobile Force, or Kido Butai, now sat roughly 490 miles, or about 789 kilometers, north of Hawaii. Rear Admiral Kusaka Runosuke summoned all who could spare their duties to the Akagi's flight deck. Here, a multicolored square flag was raised, which left those assembled speechless. It was a moment of great emotion, so much so that those aboard the nearby Kaga also hoisted their own version of the flag. Course was then altered due south. The faint light of the rising sun soon glimmered in the east as pilots and flight crews readied themselves, motors roared to life. The fleet's six carriers then slowly began to turn into the wind, and as noted by Mitsuo Fuchida, a captain in the Imperial Japanese Navy Air Service, the battle flag was now added to the other at the masthead while on the flight deck, a green lamp was waved in a circle to signal takeoff. Moments later, the first of several waves that comprised the attack on Pearl Harbor were then launched. This as of yet unnamed flag, however, likely wasn't any mystery to most in Kido Butai or the Imperial Japanese Navy more generally. It was the Z flag, one of several international maritime signal flags used for communicating messages about safety of navigation and other matters. The whole system is known as the International Code of Signals and uses a phonetic alphabet, but I'm not going to get into that, so don't worry. Rather, what we're going to be talking about here is why the Z flag held so much importance to the IJN. To do that, we have to look at another conflict which predates World War II by nearly half a century, the Russo-Japanese War. And more specifically, a national hero from that war, the so-called Nelson of the East, Grand Admiral Togo Heihachiro. Okay, first let's go over the flag design in brief. The Z flag is a diagonally quartered square consisting of four triangles, which meet at the center of the square. Starting from the top and going clockwise, the triangles are yellow, blue, red, and black. It is the only international maritime flag to use four colors and, when displayed by itself, means I require a tug or I am shooting nets when in fishing waters. The Z, or Z in Z flag, comes from the NATO phonetic alphabet, also known as the International Radio Telephony Spelling Alphabet, and stands for Zulu. As the name implies, the Z flag and other international maritime signal flags can be used for sending messages. A great example of this was Vice Admiral Horatio Nelson's message, England expects every man will do his duty, at the start of the Battle of Trafalgar in 1805. The whole message, which had words that needed to be spelled out letter by letter, required 12 lifts, but went down in British naval history and has a legacy far beyond that of the Napoleonic Wars. Interestingly, Nelson's Britain would also play a rather significant role in Togo Heihachiro's story as well. The third son of Togo Kichizaemon, a samurai in service of the Shimazu clan, is Kori Bugyo, or District Magistrate. Heihachiro, hereafter referred to as Togo, was born on January 27, 1848, in modern-day Kagoshima Prefecture. Raised to become a samurai, Togo's first real experience in warfare occurred in August 1863 during the bombardment of Kagoshima by the Royal Navy, following the Namamugi incident in which a British merchant had been killed by a retainer of the Satsuma domain. He thereafter enlisted in the Navy when he was just 17 years old and served aboard a paddle wheel steam warship, the Kasuga, which during the latter phase of Japan's Boshin War participated in the Battle of Miyako Bay and the Battle of Hakodate. And if you've watched our video about the Republic of Ezo, that means Togo was in the vicinity of Enomoto Takeaki, who himself made a cameo appearance in our Minami Torishima episode, receiving Mizutani Shinroku in Tokyo. So yeah, we've got a cinematic universe sort of thing for 19th and early 20th century Japan going on here. Anyway, in 1871, Togo was one of 12 Japanese officer cadets selected to travel to Britain, arriving at the port of Southampton in April of that year. He then traveled to London and onward to Plymouth, where he studied history, mathematics, and engineering at a naval preparatory school while also receiving instruction in the English language. Togo later served as cadet aboard the HMS Worcester and received gunnery training on the HMS Victory in Portsmouth Harbor. 
After two years of training, he graduated second in his class and following a promotion to lieutenant, returned to Japan on May 22, 1878, aboard the IJN's newly purchased Congo-class ironclad corvette, the Hiei. Things had sort of changed in Japan during his absence, however. During the Satsuma Rebellion, a revolt by disaffected samurai against the new imperial government in 1877, three of his brothers had died, as had his benefactor and reluctant leader of the rebellion, Saigo Takamori. And, as much as I would like to go into further detail about Togo's life here, this isn't a ghost biography episode. But, if you would like to hear more about that, or any of the other historical figures mentioned in this episode, just let us know in the comments down below. Okay, so in 1883, Togo was given command of his first ship, later serving in the Sino-French War and Sino-Japanese War, in which he sank a Chinese transport ship, the Kaohsiung, under command of T.R. Galsworthy, who, in a strange twist of fate, had been one of Togo's instructors as a young cadet aboard the HMS Worcester. Galsworthy, his chief officer, and bosun were the only survivors of some 1,500 people, mostly Chinese soldiers bound for Korea. In 1895, Togo was promoted to rear admiral, and following a short period as commandant at the Naval War College in Tokyo and Sasebo Naval College in Nagasaki, was recalled to active duty in mid-1900. Then, on December 28, 1903, as tensions with Russia were growing, he was appointed Commander-in-Chief of the Imperial Japanese Navy's Combined Fleet. Less than a year later, Togo found himself organizing a surprise torpedo attack on the Russian Far East Fleet in Port Arthur, which in many ways paralleled that of Pearl Harbor some 36 years later. And by that, I mean Japan issued a declaration of war three hours after its attack something that left the Russian government, and in particular, Tsar Nicholas II, stunned. Despite the initial element of surprise, the attack soon turned into a protracted blockade and eventual siege of Port Arthur. And yes, I might be sounding like a broken record here, but if you'd like to see us cover the Russo-Japanese War or the Battle of Port Arthur in more detail, let us know down below. We've got a new series planned uh, that's going to deal with battles and other forgotten chapters from history, so yeah, it works. In desperation, Russia sent its Baltic fleet, renamed the 2nd Pacific Squadron, halfway around the world to save Port Arthur. The journey covered some 18,000 miles, or about 29,000 kilometers, and when it finally arrived, met with utter disaster. Essentially, the Russian fleet, in poor condition from its journey, had three ways to approach Vladivostok before bringing the Japanese fleet to battle. They could go around Japan, passing through the La Perouse or Soya Strait, which separates Sahalin from Hokkaido. They could pass through the Sugaru Strait, which separates Hokkaido from Honshu, but yet again would have to sail around Japan itself. Or they could pass through the Tsushima Strait, the shortest and most direct route. Togo, putting himself in his Russian counterpart's place, believed he would opt for the latter, and he therefore began to prepare for intercepting the Russian fleet near Tsushima. On the night of May 26, 1905, the Russian fleet approached the Tsushima Strait outside regular shipping channels to avoid detection. The Japanese, however, soon spotted lights from a Russian hospital ship, the Ariol, which in compliance with the rules of war had left them alight, and a message was sent to Togo in Hapo, Korea. Confident in his plan of action, Togo wired a now famous message to Tokyo, saying, in response to the warning that enemy ships have been sighted, the combined fleet will immediately commence action and attempt to attack and destroy them. Weather today fine, but waves high. Something later quoted by Prime Minister Shinzo Abe in 2017 when talking about a terrible GDP report and upcoming snap elections. Aboard his flagship, the Mikasa, Togo put to sea and just before 2 p.m. local time, both fleets spotted each other despite heavy fog. Shortly after this, Togo ordered the hoisting of the Z flag, and perhaps channeling Horatio Nelson's spirit, issued a predetermined message to the entire Japanese fleet. The Empire's fate depends on the result of this battle. Let every man do his utmost duty. The battle which followed was a complete disaster for the Russians, who lost 11 battleships, 5 of their 9 cruisers, 6 of their 9 destroyers, and 5,045 men in a matter of hours. Japanese losses were practically non-existent by comparison, three torpedo boats and 117 men. Although not seriously damaged, the Mikasa had been hit more than 40 times in battle, resulting in 113 of the previously mentioned 117 casualties. 
The Battle of Tsushima was a decisive Japanese victory, and the first defeat of a major European power by an Asian nation in the modern era. This, along with the subsequent Japanese invasion of Sahalin, eventually forced Russia to sue for peace, and both countries would, in September, sign off on the Treaty of Portsmouth, which officially brought the Russo-Japanese War to a close. Japan had now emerged as the preeminent power in East Asia. Togo's victory earned him acclaim not just in Japan, but the world over, and he soon received the nickname the Nelson of the East. Anyway, the hoisting of the Z flag, or Admiral Togo's banner, also soon took on mythical qualities of its own, and thus Rear Admiral Kusaka Runosuke, some 30 plus years later, sought to channel that energy before the attack on Pearl Harbor, also known as Operation Z during its planning stages, in a possible reference to Japan's victory at Tsushima. Some even claim the flag hoisted aboard the Akagi was in fact the very same one which had been displayed on the Mikasa back in 1905. I should mention, however, there is a bit of controversy regarding the hoisting of the Z flag on the Akagi, with some historians claiming that despite Kusaka's wishes, several staff officers protested, saying it would cause confusion being an international maritime signal flag. The Z flag reportedly was therefore lowered, and another flag that vaguely resembled it hoisted in its place. Another version of events says it was actually the D and G flags raised on the Akagi, their meaning in 1941 being the same as that of the Z flag in 1905. Whatever the case, the Z flag was reportedly flown by the Akagi again during the Battle of Midway, and once more by the Zuikaku, the second and last Shokaku class aircraft carrier built by the IJN sunk in the Battle of Leyte Gulf, which may have been the largest naval battle in history, depending on how you look at the criteria. Today, the Z flag still flies aboard the Mikasa, which now sits as a historical museum ship in Yokosuka, just under a two hour train ride from Tokyo. Outside Japan, the Z flag also has special meaning of sorts in Greek naval history. In the Battle of Eili, which pitted the outnumbered forces of the Kingdom of Greece against those of the Ottoman Empire, the Z flag was hoisted to indicate independent movement of Pavlios Kudriotis' flagship, which outmaneuvered the Ottoman fleet, forcing the retreat into the Dardanelles. The emblem of the Kotroner class frigate Kudranotis features the Z flag in commemoration of this event. And yeah, I know my pronunciation was probably abysmal there, but I, I really did try. I really did. If you made it this far, seriously, thanks for watching, and hopefully you enjoyed the video. It was a look into a, well, lesser known bit of Imperial Japanese history. We've got plenty of other content like this on the channel already, and much more planned in the future, so if that's something of interest to you, consider subscribing, and we'll see you again next time.